Welcome back guys. Today we are going to take a look at how you can revive your dead lithium ion cells that you cannot charge on your charger. This cell if we measure the voltage is below 2 volts. Note that this video is not about how safe it is to use those cells or not. But what we will look into today is how you can revive the cells. It does not matter if they are at 0 volt or if they are at 1 volt or 2 volt. The problem is that some chargers, for instance the IMAX, won't even charge this cell. Pre-charging a cell can be done in different ways. The first one that I will be showing here is to use some sort of DC power supply. So let's start this up. We need to set the voltage to maximum, I would say somewhere around 3 to 4 volt. Next thing is to set the current. You always want to set the current so you don't rush it too much. And the easiest way is just to short the system and you set the current to, I would say, somewhere around 100 milliamp. And what you then do, you will take your cell and you hook the cell up and you will be bumping the voltage until you reach a voltage that you can put into your charger. In this case you see that it already reached 3.8 volt. So basically what you are going to do is let this run until it reach at least 2.5 to 3 volt and then you can start charging instead. If you want to bump start the cell in a different way, you can use your charger for that as well. If you are using, for instance, let's take the charger on that side. So let's say you're going to charge your cell, for instance on this turnage charger that is pretty close to an IMAX. And you insert the cell. And you set it in for 1S and you start the charger. And it runs battery check. You will see that that charge actually is alarming about low voltage. And that's because this LiPo is way below 2.5 volt that this is set for minimum. And you cannot charge it, so how do you do it then? So what you instead need to do is that you either go into nickel cadmium mode or nickel metal hybrid mode. And we set the current to 100 milliamp. And you run it. This will trickle this battery up a little bit at least. And in most cases that is enough. If not, you need to raise the voltage one step and go to 3 volt instead. So this is one way to bring up the cells. For instance if you have an eye charger, the eye charger is not as sensitive. It will actually start to charge the lithium ion cells already from 1 volt and up. So if we run a charge on this one, it doesn't matter, let's say we run 1 amp. And this is the good thing about this charger. If you see here in display, it does say pre-C. That means that it has detected that the voltage is low. So what it is doing, it's running a pre-charge. And a pre-charge on this charger is set to 100 milliamp. And that it will be doing until it reaches a certain voltage and then start to charge the cell normally. And that's also a good way to revive the cell. But what about bump charging a cell from one to another? For instance this green one here that's fully charged and this one that is below one volt. What if we just put them in parallel? No, that's not good at all. If you put two cells in parallel where one is full and one is empty the current will rush really really fast from one cell to another and you are stressing out both cells. This is not good at all and you will or can cause damage to the cells instead. Let's take this two slot 18650 cell holder. On the back side I have soldered this side together and on this side I have a resistor. And that will cause the current to be able to flow between the two cells but limited by the resistor. So let's take a look at how this is done. But first we need to do some calculations. So let's calculate what type of resistance that we need. Let's have the both batteries here. We are connecting the negative side and the positive side is connected via a resistor. In the worst case we will have 0 volt on that side and 4.2 volt on that side. When the current is flowing here, 
we need to define the resistor that we are going to use to limit the current in this circuit. And that is this formula. We are going to limit the current to somewhere around 0 0.05 amp. So basically we know the voltage, we know that the maximum drop that we will have is 4.2 volt and we know the current is 0 0.05 amp. The result of 84 ohm. To divide this to the current it cannot exceed 50 milliamp we need a resistor of 84 ohm. But to pick this resistor we need to know the wattage of the current flowing as well. And we know U and we know I. So we will need a resistor that is at least one fourth watt. Otherwise the resistor might burn up. If you are afraid of this, you can always use two resistors, or one half resistor or one watt resistor. Down below I will be linking in resistors that can be used for this for running 50 milliamp through. So what I have done here is I have taken this holder with two slots, normal wire between those and here I have a resistor at around 80 ohm. This resistor I am using here is half a watt so it's good enough for this purpose. So let's check that out. So I have hooked up this multimeter here and let's the multimeter itself is hooked up on one of the side of the resistor. So let's push this in here. And you will see that this cell has somewhere around 1.1 volt. So if we want to bump this, we take another cell, for instance this one here. And let's measure it a little bit quickly. And you will see that this one is 4 volt. So what we do is that we push in this cell here. And what will happen now, you'll see that the right one is still 4 volt and the left one will slowly, slowly, slowly be climbing up, as you can see on the voltmeter. So basically what we are doing now, we are charging the low side cell with 50 milliamp at most, actually it's not 50 milliamp because the voltage between them are not 4.2 volt but it's less than 50 milliamp at least. So a slow charge not causing any issues to neither of the cells. And this is important. And it's very simple to create this as well. So if you want to do that, check out the links below for what type of gear you need to buy. Working with lithium ion cells is fun and addictive. But when you are scavenging secondhand cells, you will get cells that aren't working properly. So basically if we take, for instance, this green cell here and measure the voltage, as you can see there are no voltage at the cell whatsoever. So is this cell dead or is it not dead? That's the good question. So if we go back and see what we can do about cells that do not take charge at all. Actually, you should not do this. Inside here on the positive side you have the CID. That's the pressurized protection unit if the cell builds up pressure inside. And that can be done for instance by overcharging or heating the cell. This CID here will disconnect the positive side. For instance this cell here, as you saw earlier, we were not able to charge this cell at all. There's no voltage. And once again do not do this, not for main purpose, only for testing. Flat screwdriver. Gently pry it in the middle and you push it down a little bit. By doing that you will be releasing the pressure inside. As you can see now we suddenly have 3.76 volt. Sometimes you even can hear the pressure being let out. But is the cell safe? It do work. I have tested a bunch of them and they are performing as they should. But since they were pressurized, something have happened to the cell someday. And that is something that we do not know about. And you, by doing this by the, to the seed, you aren't sure of if the seed will work the next time this happens. So basically it works to do it, but you cannot or I cannot guarantee the safety. 
So for those cells, always throw the cell away. So that's it for this video. I today showed you guys how you can build a very very simple bump charger for your lithium ion batteries. Just by consisting of this holder and a simple resistor, you are able to revive all the cells that does take charge and do not revive the ones that have a broken CID. Bin them, trust me. If you do not want to do it that way, you can of course use a charger in nickel metal hybrid mode or nickel cadmium mode or even use a DC power supply or DC DC converter. The important thing is to limit the current so you don't cause any stress or more stress to the cells that you are trying to revive. So I hope you liked this video and you haven't subscribed to my channel already, don't forget to press the subscribe button down there and if you want to support my work, check out the links below as well. If you have any suggestion on what you want me to do in the future in terms of videos, just hit it down with a comment and I will see you next time. So, auf Wiedersehen, bye.